Hello, and welcome to Data Art's first webinar in a new series. Today's webinar is entitled The Role of Data Lakes in Modern Data Platforms. I'm Bob Liepoltz, Chief Business Development Officer here at Data Art, and I'm honored to host two really illustrious speakers today. Uh, those two panelists will include Alexi Utkin. Alexi is a principal consultant and head of Data Art's data management competency. He's located in London and has worked with many of our clients for well over a decade. Also speaking we be, will be Oleg Komisarov, a senior architect and consultant based here in New York. Oleg has been with the company for more than 15 years and works on many of our largest, most complex data management and data lake projects. Alexi, can I turn it over to you? Yeah, thank you very much, Bob. Hello, Alexi here. Hi, Internet. We all got here to talk about data architectures, data lakes. But before we do that, I'd like to spend just a few minutes recapping on the business context, why it all matters. And uh, I'd like to start with three trends we see in, in business. So the first one is the expectations of the customers in the digital era. Customers expect experiences like those they get from Airbnb, Uber, Revolut, all these new tech companies. These experiences are immediate, they're personalized, they're informed, and they show true understanding of the customer and, and his context, they deliver it in the context. So the expectation of people moves from one industry to another and everyone needs to play their part. The second trend is the new volumes of data. All you know that all the school things in analytics, machine learning is very data hungry. So the data is growing. It's growing at 40% per year. And in five, six years, it will reach almost 200 zettabytes. The number of internet users will soon will be everyone who is capable of using any digital device. And we have social data, IoT data, virtual agents, all that and the channels of internet, internet pipes are developing to move all this data around. A third trend I want to mention is the new types of data and the dark data. You know that you know historically companies used to deal with the operational systems like customer records, transactions, all that. But more and more in every industry, firms look into usage of dark data and alternative data. And by dark data, I mean the term coined by Gartner a few years ago, which refers to the data which firm collects, processes, and stores for the regular business, but not for other purposes. And the alternative data is pretty much everything you see on the screen. It's image data, click stream, social media, tax, geolocation, all that somewhat new for the companies. And smart businesses use it to compete. What's interesting for me in particular is i get surprised like every year i have a number of client conversations and i i'm surprised how little predictability particularly technical people in the firms have about the needs of uh, processing this type of data their companies existed for decades and nothing really changed in terms of core business processes still the same entities but then literally tomorrow, the business stakeholders may come and say, we, we need that, we need to process, process all that and be smarter. So with all these trends, what is the real business opportunity there? We all know the general benefits of data analytics. You know, you heard it many times, like new products, services, business agility, competitive advantage, high revenues, lower costs and risk. We heard all that. But for today, I want to highlight just few areas, three areas, which are more common among the clients we see. So the first one is a massive personalization of product services and marketing channels. Think of it as B2C of pretty much every industry. So let's take an example of health insurance. There it would mean that you go from like a bucket risk or your policy being priced or based on a large pool of people to an individual pricing, but even further to individual recommendations tailored for you on how you should change your lifestyle to be healthy and lower the risk. In other industries like finance, travel, media, the same area applies as like new tailored products offerings to the clients. So the second area is real-time and predictive risk analytics. 
let's take as an example a company like Uber. For example, if they have a sudden drop in rights in one region, only a few years ago, it would take them days to pull all the relevant data and do analysis and figure out all the reasons why. Today, they can see it in real time. Maybe it's payment provider dropped or something like that. And they can see it, they can act on it immediately. Another case would be fraud analytics. You know, there is no much use looking at that is like a few days after it happens, you need to act on it immediately. And the third area I want to mention is operations optimization. It's so basically the more data you collect and the more you know about how you conduct business and operate, the more you can automate and get to such nice use cases we implemented for a number of our clients like predictive maintenance and supply chain optimization. We all often hear these buzzwords like data is an asset, data is a new oil, data is a lifeblood. Some of us are tired of that. But for me, it is somewhat reflection of the importance of data for the competitive edge. Even further, the way I think about it is like the advanced technologies like cloud, machine learning, all that become really, really accessible for the business. It literally, you can get your hands on this stuff almost immediately. But what really makes you able to compete is the data you collect. And one firm might particularly have in my mind is Salesforce. Like, you know, if you choose to compete with them, you may be able to replicate their technology, hiring the technology teams or use some cloud technology to have that power. But you will struggle to compete because of the data they managed to accumulate. You won't have it, so they power their decisions on it. This is this is their competitive edge. I pulled some statistics on the companies which are advanced so-called insight driven companies in data analytics space from forest to research and presented here on a slide. They grow faster, they have high, higher revenues and profits, they compete better and the companies which are behind they obviously lose to this sort of competition. By the same forest to research it's only eight percent or so of the companies may call themselves advanced in terms of data analytics and uh, the rest, like more than half are just beginning the journey or haven't started yet. Today we focus on data architectures and I don't want to go too deep into all these organizational aspects and people processes, which are super important in data analytics space in general, but that's topic for a whole another webinar or conversation. And please reach out to us if you're interested in having one. But still on the subject of this advanced and size driven companies, I want to say very few things about you know, how they're different from others. So the first is they're very strategic and they're very decisive about the role of data analytics in their business. They have no doubt about it. Second, they empower business users with data and they collect more and more data. And the last is that they implement analytics in a very agile manner in short iterations with small teams getting to results quickly and they use the right technology they invest in right technology to do that with all that we come to the topic of technology but before we dive into all the different architectures and data lakes i want to set a scene uh, just recapping everyone on what we still see or used to see just recently and what is called like traditional or legacy data analytics stack. Typically you have your systems like operational systems, again, with transactions, customer records, all that. And one way or another it's flowing to some sort of data warehouse or, or a data mart, uh, which then powers reports or BI dashboards. There are three main problems with this setup. So first, the Implementation cycles for analytics take too long. So to onboard the new data set and build new series of dashboards, it's like weeks, sometimes months. Second, the scalability is very limited. It's on premise. You need to buy more hardware and more appliances, pay more licenses, and hence the costs are very high. And the third is that from functional perspective, it doesn't live up to the expectations of modern analytical business users, such as processing of unstructured data, ad hoc queries, machine learning, data science workloads. So basically with this setup, firms struggle to just keep with the speed of business. And even more, like among the clients we have, we, you know, we often see firms who just sit on operational systems and reports from those systems and don't have analytical infrastructure at all. So now what is on the other side of the spectrum? What do all these advanced firms have. They still may have their data warehouse, which is structured, optimized, curated, high quality data, and it will serve the wide range of users in the business, which is important, but they don't stop there. They basically got from an ability to answer 
non questions with the known data to then ability to answer unknown questions with un with known data and then ultimately they now answer in unknown questions with unknown data in terms of workloads it means that they added unstructured data ad hoc queries data science all these new types which now attribute to another 80 percent of what they actually run through their analytical systems they put data in hands of business users and allow them to quickly explore and experiment with this data and the platforms they have are very flexible and scalable and we will be talking about that today they're more like ecosystems of platforms rather than you know single build platform so now let's have some specifics about again in in what way these technology capabilities are different from a perspective of data sources traditionally we have structured relational data advanced firms had to that semi-structured and structured data as logs websites social media alternative data now they able to store and ingest and store almost unlimited amount of data in the original form and do it at the required latency. From the data structure perspective in traditional setups, what you used to have is the structure is fixed. And it's basically dictated the way your analytical or, or database technology stores records and process records, and it was fixed. If something doesn't fit, it will break at the point of ingestion. In the advanced firms, the schema is not fixed when the data is captured they can capture everything without breaking and they support a variety of different formats which are open and enable absolutely different analytical pipelines even even tomorrow ones from data transformation perspective in traditional setup it's pretty important point you you have to do pretty much all that up front you do time-consuming data cleansing, you enrich your data, you integrate, you transform it to some sort of single source of truth, which then is widely used in the business and it is trusted. That was pretty much the only option. In the advanced firms, it's not the only option. They can also do this ad hoc queries. They're flexible. They can have data science related feature engineering. It's totally different types of transformation and they're flexible with it. From the analytics themselves, we used to have pretty much SQL queries, BI tools, full text search, which was good, but limited. The advanced firms have the big data analytics, so high volume, real time scenarios, machine learning. They allow users to explore and quickly query data and try it out, visualize it very quickly. What is also super important is it is very easy to introduce new types of analytics because all this technology, all the platforms are API based, open format based. So, you know, the new type of analytics comes in and sits on, on, a, on an open format and uh, works almost right away. From price performance ratio in a traditional setup, what we had is the high cost for storage and processing, but the data warehouses were super optimized for the queries they were able to run. The advanced firms have a low cost storage and for the performance, it's trade-off between scale, speed and cost. The users used to be for, for BI kind of business users, business analysts, the advanced firm had a whole range of other more sophisticated users as data scientists, data engineers, developers. The data quality in traditional setups was high but you know it's not necessarily a good thing but basically it was supporting only high quality data in advanced firms it can be high but it can be low it depends on the use case some use cases can work on different quality of data but the data quality must be transparent otherwise it's just not useful and the last point data sharing and collaboration it used to be very limited you know a business user had to go through some sort of central team which was built in all these reports and dashboards and, and work through that in the new types of companies the business users and analysts and you know data scientists they collaborate they can share securely all the data sets models uh, dashboards or whatever they create without any central function with all this background and the comparison of capabilities we formulate some sort of conceptual view of the modern data architecture which we often deploy one form or another of that to our client projects so here on the left side you have sources the unstructured structured data coming from your existing on-premise systems or clouds or open data or social and then it gets ingested to a data lake which holds all that 
as a single source. Then it still can go to data warehouse, data marts for this high quality curated, optimized uh, workloads, go to standard BI dashboards and reports you used to see. But it doesn't stop there. So we have ad hoc queries, which now they can go to data warehouse and to the data lake as well. We have more sophisticated workloads like the data science related ones. They have a tendency going to the data lake more often than using data from data warehouse. And then we have a special applications like machine learning models, big data applications, real time apps. They have a tendency of just sitting on top of the data lake. And the last type of workload is kind of external uh, customers, users facing data-driven apps, uh, services, APIs. Uh, they can go to both, but data warehouse more often just because it's more uh, kind of high quality data. And the last point on this conceptual architecture, it's super important that it provides um, end-to-end -end common data services, such as data governance, metadata, security, data quality, all that. Uh, and it does it again end to end. Firms had a massive pain point trying to implement all these aspects in, in different patchy systems they had. In a modern architecture, it, uh, it, it's kind of built in block, supports it in the whole, like all the workloads, all the stores everywhere. Just kind of recap on terminology. What is the data lake? So originally the definition was that the system or repository of data stored in its natural or raw format. But from functional side, what it can do, it can quickly ingest anything. So we don't enforce any schema, big data ingestion, think of like large volumes at a high speed, all that. It has low cost scalable storage in cloud it will be decoupled from compute. It allows users have a flexible access. So diverse tool set, changing tool set, different types of analytical process and all that. It holds all data in one place, so it's a single source of truth for source data, and it is future-proof. Uh, you can replace tooling and, and underlying technology. And the users are different as well. I mentioned we had business users who were looking at the dashboards and reports. Now we have more sophisticated business users who build their own analytical models. And, and drive in size. And then on the further end, we have very tech savvy data scientists, data engineers, and app developers who build their models or applications to solve business problems. The last thing I want to offer for you today from my side is the view of the evolution of different architecture patterns in the data space. We start with traditional data warehousing BI. We covered that uh, once again, key points optimized for relational data and standard BI and reporting, but has a high cost and, and low scalability and long time to onboard new data and implement new scenarios. And then with emergence of all the big data technology, mainly fast data and structured data and, and uh, large scale data, Firms started to build these big data solutions on premise. Basically, through that, they enabled machine learning and data science use cases. They could ingest data quickly, any data. But the problem with this approach was it has high implementation and maintenance costs. You, you need to source all this technology, build your clusters, configure and maintain it. Then a few years ago, a third pattern appeared, which is the modern cloud data warehouse. And Snowflake is one of the famous names in this space. This architecture is simple to set up and use, and it has a lot of benefits of data lake as well. Uh, so you can quickly onboard structured or semi-structured data. It powers advanced BI and ad hoc queries, has a great performance. It is as optimized as traditional data warehouse, but also it has the uh, cloud scale. So you get extra performance from that. But at the same time, we need to understand it's not necessarily low latency side. So it's kind of BI workload. So it's seconds and uh, low latency would still sit in big data or data lake uh, category. Modern cloud data warehouses give all the cloud uh, benefits like cost saving because storage and computers separated. They scale elastically you know, to a huge extent. They have all this end-to-end -end security and governance platform services. And many firms you know, with slightly less sophisticated big data workloads, they actually uh, preferred that, that option and migrated to modern cloud data warehouses. But now we come to the fourth pattern, which is the cloud data lakes. In essence, it's similar to big data solutions, but built in the cloud. So they have all the same workloads, any data, any scale, any speed, 
all that, but it also has low implementation costs and, and running costs because it uses a lot of platform technologies which are pre-integrated and, and ready out of box. It also has all these same cloud benefits like governance, security, durability, and resilience, things which are tremendously expensive and hard to implement if you're talking about the on-premise solution. But also they have this high flexibility of tools and underlying technology, once again, all the API open source, open standard base technologies evolve very quickly and you can plug them uh, and dro drop them out very easily. We see a lot of clients who are start with data lakes and we see clients who actually do both data lakes and data warehouses for, for different types of workloads. The more kind of BI ones optimized will go with data warehouse, more like low latency, uh, sophisticated and structured data with a data lake. I have a few slides for you for the home read. I won't cover it today, but with more detailed coverage of different uh, features of these respective architectures. But at this point, I want to conclude and pass it over to Oleg for, for a deep dive. Thank you, Alexei. Thank you. Let's dive deeper into data lakes. During the next 20 minutes, you will understand how data lakes are organized. We will learn common principles, best practices, and technologies for data ingestion, storage, and analytics. And we will provide some key recommendations. So if you decided to build your own data lake, there are several components that you most likely need, need to build, must have components of data lake. You need to source any data sources, as Alexi mentioned. Uh, you need to ingest them in common scalable store without any ETL transformation. Uh, you need to catalog all this data uh, because without catalogs, you will not be able to govern your data, discover your data, and organize access control. You need all types of analytics for batch processing, for stream analytics, for advanced analytics, such as machine learning. You need to orchestrate end-to-end -end data ingestion and uh, analytic flows. You need to serve data to all types of your users and, and roles, including um, external partners. And you need a framework for uh, governance of analytics and data. Without governance, it is impossible to have enterprise uh, great solution. Modern uh, data providers or cloud providers uh, provide you with all necessary components. So AWS, for example, give you data ingestion, uh, centralized storage, catalogs, access and control analytics and serving governance components. But as you see, there are plenty of technologies that are available in every of these areas. On the top of, of that, AWS, for example, offering out of the box AWS lake formation that you can use to build your data lake. But in order to understand what actually needed for, for you, which component and which technology to, to use, you need to understand a little bit better in ingestion, storage, and analytics patterns. Let's take a look at ingestion. So what are your typical data ingestion needs? You need to source data from uh, all of your enterprise uh, sources, relational, warehouses, uh, file systems. You need to source data from external sources, CRMs, or P systems through uh, different SDKs and APIs. And your typical needs are data workload migration. When you just organize your data lake, you need to move data usually from your relational structured databases to data lake. You need to, in, uh, to be able to ingest data in batches. After initial ingestion, you need to have incremental ingestion and you need most likely streaming data ingestion. This uh, low velocity data uh, usually is going through so-called cold path and uh, high velocity data goes through the hot, hot path of uh, data lake. So now when you know these uh, categories of uh, needs and ingestion and, uh, and types of ingestion, you can look at uh, the, your data source. For example, if you need to move relational data for uh, initial data migration to cloud, you will be looking at database migration or transfer services provided by cloud data providers, or 
you should consider CDC change data capture systems. Change data capture systems are systems that allow you to point and click configuration without any code. In minutes and hours, you can start moving your data from relational sources to, to, to data lake. If you are looking to move your file sources to the cloud, you will be looking at storage gateways, or you may even consider uh, more exotic solutions like small mobiles, small balls. These are physical devices that you can order to your data centers, and then cloud data provider, uh, after you upload data from your data center to this device, move it to their data center and upload your data to, to the cloud. When you need to import data, let's say, from CRM so, or P systems, you will be looking at independent software vendor connectors or APKs provided by these vendors. And for stream sources, uh, you will be choosing uh, streaming technology. Uh, very often people asking, when do we need streaming or change data capture sources? So you need streaming uh, ingestion if you need to ingest your log files or your custom application events and change data capture usually used to move uh, for continuous ingestion of your structured data sources to to data lake and for data lake uh, migration. Now, when you understand these tools categories, uh, when you look at all this variety of ingestion tools provided by uh, cloud vendors, you will be able to uh, make right decisions about what tool, what service do you need for your needs. But there are also plenty of tools available provided by independent uh, software vendors. Attunity, uh, recently acquired by ClickView, is a very good CDC change data capture system that supports a lot of different um, sources, orchestration, configuration, management, and it is uh, it can move data to AWS, Azure, and many other platforms. Matillion is another good tool with uh, very sophisticated and uh, flexible uh, ETL capabilities. Oracle Golden Gate is, is a popular and traditional tool for CDC and data movement. Private trends, and uh, I recommend to take a look at other tools. And as a summary, you you need to identify your business case first to use the tool, the most agile tool that you need for this business case. You need to focus on near term needs. Do not over architect solutions. Your solution data uh, lakes and ingestion could be set up in minutes, and um, you can start getting value uh, very quickly, quickly, business value. And uh, also one big recommendation is to automate ingestion. Without ingestion automation, if you leave it manual, you will accumulate technical debt. And anyway, you will need to cover it later on. Uh, let's move to storage now and review best practices uh, here. Storage is crucial component because you can apply different tools on the top of your data lake. Uh, you can change compute tools for data move, for data analytics, but storage is usually uh, less flexible and considering data volumes, it is very important to un organize it correctly. Usually data lakes have three zones. First is raw zone. In, in this zone, you store data in its original format, JSON, XML, CSV. So why do you need this raw zone? Because you need immutable uh, data in several major cases. You should be able to recreate uh, and reprocess data at any time, uh, especially if you need to conduct new analysis on data that you did not use before. You may need it for data, disaster recovery. If anything happens to original store, you always have your extra uh, replica. In optimized store, you store data optimized for reads and for performance. If you keep adding data to your uh, raw storage, over time, your performance will be decreased. Optimized store is uh, done by converting files from raw zone to read optimized, optimized formats such as Avro, Orc, or Parquet. And optimized zone is um, 
you know, primary zone for all analytics in the system. And usually third zone is where uh, analytic zone, where um, data scientists and analysts have their own sandboxes and copy data for analysis. You need this zone to not mess up uh, the clean, well-defined, and well-structured data in optimized data space. And usually this is target uh, location for all clean uh, reporting. Uh, sometimes you also, if you have PRI data, you may need a quarantine zone uh, where data that did not pass yet PRI uh, checks is uh, quarantined. And Sometimes people organize standalone clean uh, reporting zone. So when I mentioned about optimization, I mentioned several files, file formats. These uh, file formats turn your data into basically columnar database optimized for queries. And also these file formats are open source. They are not proprietary. That's why you can apply various types of analytical tools on top of your data. So that's how your uh, data lake becoming future-proof. All future uh, analytical tools uh, will be compatible with this open for, uh, form, open source formats. Another uh, details on optimizations, you usually store data, uh, you have different data structures in your raw and optimized zones. Uh, raw zone usually reflect your data source format and optimized uh, zone is optimized for your query patterns. And optimized zone also has so-called partitions. Partitions are like logical entities that point into physical files and they are used to minimize data scans and to reduce cost, improve performance of, of your queries. So uh, partitions and um, adjustment of your data structure for uh, optimizing your data structures uh, for queries is very important. Uh, data catalogs store this partition information, any information about uh, data location, data columns, table names, uh, they are crucial uh, for data governance and security and access settings, as I mentioned. But uh, you don't need to add uh, all this metadata to data catalogs uh, manually. Uh, So-called crawlers are responsible for automatic scanning and crawling your data and adding all this metadata to your da data catalog automatically. And you also need to, one of the best practices is cost optimization. Uh, data that you use infrequently that doesn't require performance you put in into uh, cheaper uh, slower data storage and frequently used data you use in more expensive and um, more performant uh, data storage. You also should apply retention policies. If data not used, it could be moved to super slow and cheap storage or removed from data lake according to uh, your compliance needs. W what are your uh, data analytics needs? Uh, you need it for batch processing, stream processing, uh, machine learning, and um, analytics. And also consider that usually different, slightly different tools used for cold path and cold and hot path of your data lake. And there are several analytic tool categories that uh, are used in, in data lakes. Interactive analytics is very important, used by all types of users. Interactive analytics uh, allow you to query data as soon as it's saved to uh, data lake. That's where you get in this agility. Data ingested, you do not care about schema, you can start uh, querying this data. Tools such as um, uh, Amazon Athena based on Presto, uh, Apache Hive uh, can do that. And another big advantage of interactive analytics, you can transform data with queries without ETLs and save data back to your store and apply ELT transformation. So very little technical requirements are needed to enable this type of transformation. And uh, you can do interactive analytics not only with these tools, uh, modern data platforms such as uh, Amazon Redshift and uh, Snowflake allow to uh, link external uh, data sets located in uh, lakes and query this data. 
you still need to define schema for this data upfront, but you can apply your SQL queries to external data uh, using regular query language. Big data analytics, the king of big data analytics is Apache Spark. Most of tools and frameworks built on, on the top of Apache Spark. And uh, th this framework allows you to, in parallel, to query tons of data, huge volumes of data. And real-time analytics, also Spark is a king. Uh, it can perform uh, analysis on the top of uh, on the top of Apache Flink, Kafka, or other streaming technologies. So, uh, traditional architecture for data lake, so-called Lambda Lake, required separate tools for batch and streaming analytics, and that introduced you know additional overhead and challenges because you need different tools, you need to manage code in different places. So later on, so-called Kappa Lake uh, architecture was introduced when you basically retire your uh, batch layer and process all data as stream data uh, from for, by your analytical tools uh, using speed layer only. So that simplified architecture, technology stack, and recently new technology was introduced, Delta Lake. Delta Lake um, and frameworks such as uh, Delta Lake or Apache Hoodie enable this Kappa ar architecture. The main advantage of Data Lake, one of the main advantages is that table in this uh, Delta Lake is representing at the same time streaming source and batch table. And you can use any analytical tools to work uh, with this unified uh, data structure. But more than that, very recently, this Delta Lake technology added uh, AC transactions, so, uh, which means at atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. Now, your Data Lake uh, getting properties of your uh, tra uh, traditional transactional database and you can do absurd deletes and insert for in data lake. So very important, I highly recommend you to, to take a look at these technologies. And uh, most of users, especially business users, uh, use all these BI and visualization frameworks. You're most likely familiar with them. I just wanted to highlight that uh, there are also open source BI and visualization frameworks available. Apache Superset is a recent trend. Uh, you take a look at Apache Superset. It has very rich collaboration features, and uh, it has its own pros and cons, but in many cases, you can get a free uh, BI tool for uh, your organization. So that's concluding these three areas, ingestion, data storage, and analytics and uh, I will provide some key recommendations. So first of all, Data Lake may not be the right solution for your needs. Uh, some of modern warehouses provide capabilities that early were available only in Data Lakes, today they're available in warehouses. So Snowflake, Amazon Redshift uh, give you independent compute and uh, store layers. You can query a data lake data directly from these uh, warehouses. They provide good performance. They have continuous data ingestion. They have automated uh, scale out uh, options, scale up options, and virtually require uh, no management. So if you, your business need uh, may be solved uh, without you know, more complex data lakes, so pay attention to it. Do not overcomplicate your solution. Focus on providing business value as soon as possible and do not over architect, do not build frameworks because data architectures are quite flexible and you can add additional features later on. Uh, if you decided finally to build data lake, build all essential elements, organize your data store in all three, using all three zones build data catalog, even for raw data, uh, because if you do not catalog data, your data lake is becoming a data swamp, and you know, you, you are losing your uh, governance. Use data lake as a landing zone for all your data, secure uh, data with role-based access control. Uh, security is very important 
uh, topic and words separate uh, webinar. So if you're interested, please send us requests and we organize individual sessions or uh, another webinar on this topic and avoid data swamps, catalog on all, all your data. And if I could give three takeaways, I would say that inside driven companies use data lakes and 80% of data payloads is unstructured data. Data lakes could be enabled in a matter of days and uh, allow you to add additional cases over time. And you need to choose solution that is right for your needs. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. I think this was a great presentation. I certainly learned a lot. Um, please leave your email address or otherwise let us know if you'd like to have an individual consultation around the specifics of your data transformation and data lake needs. Thanks again and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.